What's up everybody, Cigar Shepherd Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review and today I've got the Tabernacle by Foundation in Robusto. Stay tuned. I can smoke Stogies in my house, first of all, because her father introduced me to Stogies and second of all, because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my Stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment here at Cigar Sherpa. I, of course, am your host, Laird Mayhew. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if this is not your first time here, as always, welcome back. Welcome back. It's always good to see you here around the channel. And for those of you that are not paying attention as closely as I do, we are up above 250 subscribers. I think like 90 of them in the last week. So that's good news. We're going to continue to grow here. We're going to get all of our subscribers here at Cigar Sherpa organically, um, which means, you know, no big promotions or anything like that. You know, I don't have any paid advertisers or whatever. Whatevs. That's what I meant to say. Anyway, as my intro said, I have got the Tabernacle today by Foundation Cigars. Now, if you're not familiar with Foundation Cigars, it is headed up by a man, a young man by the name of Nick Melillo? I always say Melillo. I don't know why. It's probably Melillo. Anyway, he's formerly of Drew Estates. I think he kind of grew up um, with uh, Drew Estates. If you're familiar with the Liga Privada blend, I know a lot of people are big fans of Drew Estates. He was one of their master, if not the master blender there. The guy is just a mad scientist uh, genius when it comes to tobacco. I don't know what it is that he does if he plays music and then sings he just really understands tobacco he is probably arguably maybe not even arguably the best mind in the blending game today okay that's gonna be what i say uh, that's gonna be my take on it and you heard it here he is the best blender in the business now he may not have been blending since he was five years old he doesn't come from generations of cigar blenders he doesn't you know he didn't grow up on a farm it's not you know his granddaddy didn't pass it down to him he got into it later in life i believe in his early 20s but what he has been able to do so far is revolutionary okay so we're going to talk about the tabernacle today now there's two different types of tabernacle one is the havana seed this is the original it's got a connecticut broadleaf wrapper and it's got a Mexican San Andreas wrapper along with the um, mix of Honduran and Nicaraguan fillers. It is made in his factory. I don't remember what it's called in Esteli, Nicaragua. Um, it is, it's got a really cool band too, man. You know, I'm not really into bands, but this one's nice. I don't know who that dude is right there, but he looks like some kind of like Ottoman Turk, Mongol, I don't know, some killer from back in the day it's pretty cool black and gold um very rustic cigar it's got a toothy wrapper um but for connecticut broadleaf it's it's actually it's actually a well-made cigar okay um if this is the robusto so it is five inches by uh 50 ring gauge okay construction like i said is already it's very i mean it's very evenly packed there's no soft spots Cap, you know, it's laid on there flat, but it's not a perfect circle. Tight, visible seams, toothy, slightly oily, which I like. The smell on this thing, though, is a little different. It's leathery, but it, it's, it's, it's peppery and leathery smelling, but there's, like, there's an herbal smell there. When I say herbal, I mean like, well, maybe not herbal. It's like a spice. And the first thing that comes to mind is cumin, okay? That's what it smells like. I don't know. Let's give this thing a cut and a light, and I'm going to come back and tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. I'm running out of fuel here. Wow. Okay, so right away. Perfect draw. A good amount of smoke. Good black pepper on the retro hill. Got kind of an earthy, like right away, it's like a nice earthy dried fruit type sweetness. That was good. Uh, is that cedar? 
I'm gonna call it cedar. It's got like a nice earthy, cedary, and black pepper. And the black pepper really is hitting me in the uh, the retro hail, and it is lingering. I was expecting to have some coffee in there, but it hasn't quite showed up yet. But uh, man, not even what a minute and six seconds into this cigar, and I know it's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to come back in the first third and tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We are in the first third. We're about nine minutes into this cigar, and it's burning lovely. Not razor sharp. Nice, thick ash. Um, draws tightened up a little bit. There was, it, was, it was like perfect resistance when I first lit it up. It's kind of tightened up now. Maybe that'll work itself out. Flavors are roughly the same, except along with that, um, that, that leathery, earthy, peppery sweetness, there's almost like a, it's either metallic or sometimes it reminds me of a green jalapeno, okay? And when I say that, I don't mean the spicy part of it. I mean the flesh of it. You know, it's kind of got that vegetal, kind of crisp sweetness to it. That's what it's kind of reminding me of. But then I go back and I, you know, I take a draw off of it and I taste a little metallic. Not a big fan of metallic. Let's hope that that works its way out. So, um, but the feel of this cigar is great. The color of it, the oily, oiliness. Okay, the draw is just, it's like it's going out on me, even though it's fully lit. Good smoke output. I mean, as far as the smoke coming off the foot, nice and thick. You know what I'm probably going to do? I'm not going to let this ash hang on because I think the ash may be suffocating the um, the cherry there. But that cumin taste is very, it's, it, it's kind of coming to the forefront here in the first third. And it almost tastes like oregano or the, the spice that you would put on a pizza. You know, they got that little Italian spice mixture and you put it on pizza you know if you're familiar with like new york style pizza parlors it does have a slight hint of that italian herb mixture which would be like basil oregano bosnia gold which i believe is oregano i don't know my grandmother spoke new york italian or i guess or brooklynese like mozzarella cheese was not mozzarella cheese in my grandmother's house it was mozzarella Okay, and then when I went to Italy, nobody called the shit mozzarella. You know, they called it mozzarella, you know. <laughs> or manicotti. I'm sure you guys have heard of manicotti. Well, I didn't even know what manicotti was as a kid. I knew what Monte Goods was, you know. Like, I don't know. these. The Italians came over from uh, 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 Italy, obviously, into New York. And the New York Italian, Brooklynese Italian uh, culture kind of took on a shape of its own. And uh, almost its own lingo. So... Um, even though I just digressed into a whole totally different subject, that is the flavor that I'm getting, that Bosnigo or oregano. So, mm, I don't like that the draw is tight enough, but I am enjoying this cigar. It does have, it's leathery. It's got a, a good earthiness to it, like an earthy core. It's got the black pepper is on the palate as well as the retro hell is kind of like a sweet black pepper in the retro hell, which is kind of cool. You throw in that, that cumin-y or oregano-y uh, nuance that's just kind of hiding in the back and it's definitely different and uh, I'm going to get into the second third and come back and tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. Well into the second third. We're just coming over the halfway point of the cigar. I'm going to take the band off. As you can see, it's burning kind of wonky. I'm not going to touch it up mainly because I'm kind of out of fluid, but when you do a cigar review, typically you don't want to touch it up. You just want to show, you know, you the viewers um, what the cigar does. Okay, doesn't mean that it's going to burn the same way every time, but you know, it's just how it is. I don't even know where I picked that up from. I think someone just told me that. But anyway, this is definitely a cigar that I would remember um, on a blind on a blind tasting. If somebody gave me this cigar without the band on it, I'm pretty positive that I would know what I was smoking because this is a very unique tasting cigar. Um, it's Or maybe I just smoke so many of the same flavor profiles because that's what I'm partial to. You know, I'm more partial to the spicy baker's spice. I like a little bit of sweetness. I like a little bit of 
caramely, brown sugars, creamy smokes, full bodied. Um, I tend to shy away from anything that's oaky or you know more mild in um, in strength and body. Um, this here has got an oakiness to it. It was cedar, but it's more of an oakiness now. And that metallic taste, which is gone now, but it really is like biting into a, a jalapeno without the spice, just the green pepper part of the jalapeno. And it's got a nuance of that pizza spice, as I called it. I don't know what's in that. Um, uh, I know there's like oregano in it and there's probably some um, parsley in there and then there's probably basil basil that's what it is it's very distinctive it's like like if you ever have a sangria my wife makes these sangrias with like peach nectar and basil and a, a, a pinot grigio and a little bit of sugar and it is freaking good okay but that basil is very distinctive when you match it up with like a fruit and it's very good actually so there you go try it out um, there's a recipe for you. Um, and it's got kind of a cumin-esque uh, smoke to it. Still peppery, okay? The retro hell is like a sweet pepper. And here, coming into the, the, the finishing up the, uh, or halfway through the second third and working our way back, it's starting to pick up more coffee uh, flavor, like a, like a black coffee and there's this nice sweetness there but the even the aroma reminds me of that uh cumin -y or pizza spice I, I don't know maybe i'll i'll pick an exact nuance to call it by the end of this review but it's it's very distinctive and i have not had a cigar from foundation cigars that i did not like okay i have not smoked the, the upsetters because they're flavored or they're mm, infused and I'm, I just don't go down that road. I just don't care for the infusions. But the Charter Oak is one of my favorite cigars and that's a budget stick. That's like $5 and it's a good cigar. M the Maduro, the Connecticut Broadleaf. The, the Connecticut Shade Wrapper, the lighter wrapper, is a good cigar, it's just a little light for me. Uh, the Manelic is my so far, my number one cigar this year. I absolutely love that cigar. And I'm actually going to re-review it because I reviewed that cigar early on when I started this channel. I uh, didn't really have my flow down and I'm still kind of working on it, but I feel like I'm getting better at it. So I want to re-review that cigar because it is like my favorite cigar. It so far is my top cigar of the year and we're only going into, what, five, six months out of, the, of this year. But so far, there's nothing. I mean, a lot of stuff's coming close, but there's something about that cigar that I really, really enjoy. The, the Tabernacle Havana Seed, another great cigar um, by Foundation. And I think that's all I can recall at this time. But we're here talking about the Tabernacle with the Connecticut Broadleaf, the Mexican San Andreas wrapper, and the Honduran Nicaraguan fillers. It's just it's a very unique cigar. So if you have not tried it, you, you really need to add this to your target list because it's very unique and you might like it. It is medium plus, very bold flavors though. And you're starting to sweeten up. And I'm starting to get um, some black coffee notes in there. So it, it just keeps getting better and better. So I will come back in the final third and tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We are in the final third and uh, transitions, transitions. I mean, this cigar transitions from the time you light it all the way through. Sometimes some of them flavors that you pick up, they kind of go away and they kind of peek their head back out and it's just been very, very enjoyable. Um, so let me just recap here. We started off with that, uh, that earthy dried fruit and leather, okay? And it had like a cedary taste to it. That then transitioned into more of an oak flavor, kept the leatheriness, kept the earthy core the whole way through. It picked up a metallic taste. Uh, about the only thing I'm gonna say that I'm not very fond of is a metallic taste in my cigars. Um, it did have that mystery nuance uh, that reminded me of the pizza blend, oregano and basil and parsley, you know. And it did have, but that would kind of fade and then it would remind me of cumin, which is what you'll find in a lot of Mexican food. If you're not familiar with it, run to the spice cabinet, smell it. It's, it's, it's common in cigars. Um, 
Second third, it got a little more bold. Uh, it was uh, it kind of had that uh, when you bite into a green pepper like a jalapeno without the spice, it had that kind of a note to it, and still does here in the final third. But here in the final third, you really just kind of round it out with like a very bold leather, a good coffee, um, and earthy note. It's got a very sweet retrohale, which is, you know, it's not really on the palate. The palate leaves you with a nice tingly, oily sensation, but the retrohale, you're getting like this sweet black pepper. Okay, I think it's probably the first time I've ever said that. Sweet black pepper. And there is kind of an anise, anise, anise. I don't know how to, some people pronounce it anise. Some people pronounce it anise. It's typically what you're going to find in a Sambuca, that flavor, or black licorice, I believe, is where that nuance comes from, or that, where that um, spice is, is you, utilized the most, where you're going to find it if you don't know what it is. Smoked very well. The draw did kind of tighten up there in the first third, but it, you know, it worked itself out. It might have been a vein or something in there kind of plugging it and restricting the airflow. But one thing I forgot to mention is this cigar is a viewer sent in. Uh, shout out to Michael Angelo. He sent the cigar in when he sent in the same guy that sent in the Oliva Seconds for review. Um, he sent this one in and he sent in an Oliva G Series, okay? And I smoked it, sorry. <laughs> it was, it was, I was gonna review it, but it was staring at me uh, about four nights ago and I just, I wanted to smoke it. It was one of those short, I don't know what the size is, but it was about a 54 by four inch, like a, uh, what do they normally call that? That's called a, um, oh, I always have brain parts when I'm on camera, it'll come to me. Um, damn, it's right there on the tip of my tongue when it's shorter than a Robusto. But anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. It was a great cigar. So thank you to Michelangelo. Again, if anybody out there, if I'm not covering cigars that you want to uh, see reviewed, just to kind of see someone else's opinion, uh, because not everybody's a nerd like we are and likes to like review cigars and find all these, you know, hidden nuances, send them in, okay? And if you want, if you think you can trick me up, send me in one without the band on it and I will do a mystery review and then we see if I can nail the origins of the cigar, which I'm pretty good at. I'm pretty good at that. I, mainly with Cuban cigars, normally you can't out, you can't trick me with a Cuban cigar. You take the band off. Uh, I was tricked one time with the, uh, with the AJ Fernandez last call. Okay. I swore that was a Cuban cigar. It was the 48 ring gauge by about six inch cigar. And I swore it was a Cuban cigar. And I even thought it was a Cohiba, but, um, you know, oh no, no, I didn't. I thought it was. I think it was a Cohiba. I, th I think I said it was a um, Hoya de Monterey Epicure or something. Anyway, I was wrong, so it does happen. And again, this is not no exact science. You know what I'm tasting? Maybe you've never even tasted anise. Maybe you've never even tasted cumin. So you know, it's subjective. But what you need to know is Foundation Cigars puts out one hell of a cigar on all their blends. Now. I'm not into flavored cigars or infused cigars, but if you are, I guarantee you, you're not going to go wrong with upsetters. So, um, again, let's just run this down. We got Tabernacle Foundation Cigars. Uh, it's a Robusto 5x50, um, Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, San Andreas from Mexico uh, binder with Honduran and Nicaraguan fillers. So, Cigar Sherpa Laird Mayhew reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet. You always have a backup plan in case you got to shoot them in the face. I'm out. Yeah, there you go.